Fight League Atlantic No Name Podcast with Derek and John of Fight League Atlantic. We got a great one lined up tonight with three fantastic people in the business community. John Foster, how you doing this evening? I'm doing good, man. Great. It's a rainy day in the valley, but productive nonetheless. Yeah. Good. Enjoying the Saturday. Every day Saturday now, I guess. But. Yeah, that's right. And things seem to be opening up a little bit. Let's welcome our first yeah. guest to the conversation. Let's not leave him out of the loop. Our man, Fight League, Atl- Fight League Atlantic photographer, top rope photography owner, uh, a guy who's been involved in the wrestling community and now getting involved in the martial arts community with us, John. Let's welcome Steve Eppel. How you doing, Steve? Fantastic. How about yourself? Just ripping, buddy. Just <laughs> ripping. See you, Steve. Yeah, things are great here, Steve. How are you hanging in there with this uh, quarantine, my man? Uh, not too bad. I mean, uh, being with what I do, no financial impact, really, other than my wife. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> in general, you mean, or just during the impact? Or the thick COVID? <laughs> oh, just for the, uh, the quarantine. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, so what? Uh, let, let's tell everybody what you do. Obviously, you, you own a photography company, and you, you're a big uh, kind of fan of combat sports, and now you've kind of roped up with us a little bit here, pardon the pun, but tell everybody about Top Rope Photography. Um, so I, I kind of stumbled into it. Uh, so a bit of history. Uh, I got 13 years in the military right now. Mm-hmm. Thank um, you for your service, by the way. Thank you. Um, and this is uh, kind of a side project that has been developing over time. Um, a buddy of mine who got out of the military last year, two years ago, invited me to a wrestling show. I was like, hey, I'll bring my camera. And I got emotionally attached to it like within seconds. And after you know doing 12 wrestling shows, uh, I reached out to you guys, and here we are. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I mean, top-notch photography as well. The stuff you pulled out of our show, and I've seen some of your uh, kickboxing and wrestling photos since. Yeah, are just amazing, and, and it's so cool. And, and I remember when I used to fight, and when I do sub series with Derek, and I do all these other things. You're always looking for the photos afterwards, of course, because everyone wants a kick ass photo of themselves doing something kick ass, essentially, right? So mm-hmm. it's, uh, I think it's a very, very valuable thing. It's, you know, not just for promoting, but for the fighters mm-hmm. and and the athletes as well, right? So they have something they can put out on their own social media and be proud of. So it's awesome, man. Yep. Yeah, uh, that's what it's all about. I try to do mostly for the fans. Like I'm trying to get into the uh, more of the photojournalistic part of it. Cool. So, um, like, yeah. it's one thing to sit there and try and time your shots to when a guy's going to land a punch. Mm-hmm. And there's obviously yeah. challenges in that, but it's a whole different kind of thing to try to uh, capture the emotion of the whole event. Yeah. And you do that very well. Yeah, I was going to say you've put some posts out kind of the story of a fight like in photographs so it'll be you know what eight or nine photos i guess and it's kind of like the beginning of the fight through the fight someone starts to get bloodied up and then at the end and i thought that that narrative in a few photos was really cool and that's what i'm trying to get to um eventually uh you know once things start picking up again i want to be able to take more of the event as a whole as opposed to individual fights cool uh, and interact with more like the crowd and you know that kind of stuff yeah there's a lot that goes on outside the cage, and it would be really cool to be able to show a full event. Yeah, it's actually it's super nice. smart because yeah. you know the fans at the end of the day are just as important as anything else. So you you get some fan really good action shots. I'm sure you could have got some really good action shots of the fans <laughs> at our event. Um, <laughs> I could have, Holy but uh, uh, there's a lot of inherent risk going to what would be the equivalent of a bar fight. Yeah, that's oh, true. Man. Yeah. Disgusting. Well, I'll tell you, you know how valuable those photos would be if you had the photos of them and then like, found those people like two days later, you're like, hey, dummy, look at you two nights ago. You know, give me yeah. 50 bucks or I'm putting these on Facebook. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> extortion aside, yeah. um, it would be a good idea. <laughs> Great idea. Great idea. Yeah, no, but for real, you know, a little I'm proof. I'm going to release a privacy statement after this. I actually had a good conversation with a buddy of mine, you know, and I don't know how old you are, Steve. How old are you? Uh, 36 this year. So, yeah, we're all kind of relatively the same age. I'm a little yep. bit senior. but He's Super young. At the end, John's 19. But <laughs> if, if back in the day, like, we all experienced that lifestyle where you could go out and there was no pictures, no videos, no one was doing this. We got away with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, yes. Um, in my primary way of life that has impacted immensely. Um, 
Like there used to be un- unwritten rules when you go to foreign port, like there's no pictures taken in certain places. Now it's a lot harder to police. Of course. Yeah, true enough, eh? Everyone's got a high definition camera in their pocket. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it'd yeah. be harder harder as a group of people to go off and uh, have a little fun and, and get away with it for sure. So, uh, you know, your your does the creative side of you where does that come from? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Like uh, my my grandfather used to build boats. Uh, my grandmother was an artist and used to restore paintings for uh, a museum out of Woodstock, Ontario. I don't know if she did anything for like Toronto or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but all through high school, I did like some super basic video editing stuff, uh, nothing photography related until I started doing this really. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, like honestly taking pictures of a fighter is, uh, not a creative thing to me. It's more of just a, a physical challenge, uh, especially like shooting through the fence, for instance. Yeah. Um, the creative side is where my other, uh, photography page is starting to set up. It was working with models and stuff like that. Cause I'm the guy behind the camera and even right here, this is kind of nerve wracking because I don't like being in front of the camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We spoke about that too. You know, we just spoke about that before coming live tonight, you know, in this day and age. And I, I think especially more important now of what's going on with the pandemic, people want to see who's behind the brand. They want to see personalities and they don't want to see bullshit. They don't want to see the fake reality. They don't want to see the fake influencer. They don't. And that's a fact. You look at influencers now, like a lot of the influencers, they're not getting the product, you know? So instead of sitting at home, looking all glammed up, now they're sitting at home looking four days old. So <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? And, that, and then they're not getting the products and it's, it's people are looking, they want to see real. And it's, it's interesting you say that going back to that, you, you're shooting through the fence. That's something we got to move forward. John, I, I don't know how we dropped the ball here. We had I had boxes for the camera guys to sit up, but none for the photographers. So the photographers all had to shoot through the fence. But uh, it's quite all right. I mean, I worked through it. Um, it, it while it is a challenge, it's not impossible. You just mm. got to figure out how to make it work, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. I wonder uh, how many guys we could have up there, right? Like we'll have to look into that. Probably maybe at least two. Um, maybe, that's maybe, that'll be for the commission the because they're the ones that are oh, giving yeah. us the most problem. Oh, guarantee. Yeah. That's who I'm thinking we need to clear with. <laughs> no, no, they'd be yeah. fine. There's no, yeah. there's, you're up on a stool, so there's nothing yeah. to do. There's no. There's... I've tried contacting them twice, actually, so far in the last two months, and nobody's responding. Yeah, they're um, closed. That would, that would be something. Yeah, they've been closed for March and April, but that would be something we'd, we'd have to deal with on our end, I'm sure. Well, it's, it's it. that's another thing, too. You know, you speak about that, Steve. Like, that's a, a thing that I think as a commission would be smart of them. Like, you have to have a license to be a promoter. You have to license to be a coach. You have to license to be a fighter. Why don't you have to have a license? Not saying that you should have to pay an extra, but it makes it more legit because then you can be a license with the commission and there can only be certain ones, mm. you know? I don't know. What do you think about that, Steve? Uh, I mean, like, as in a uh, like a licensed photographer, kind of like a media pass? Yeah. 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 Um, Issued for, like, a year by the commission. So you can go to any of those events for, say, 10 bucks or whatever. Like, and we would pay that obviously. As, as it, it wouldn't be a bad cool. idea. Um, but I suspect they don't have a lot of manning at this commission. Cause I've only seen what four people, four or five people. Um, and if it's just like a paid license, then there's no real benefit. Like it's anyone yeah. giving money right yeah. now, if they had some sort of like miniature training course where it goes into say, Hey, you're only allowed to go here. You're only allowed to do this. Mm. Then Sure. And yeah, and that's not super. Difficult. If they gave back, yeah, that's true. There's got to be something in return to. Otherwise, yeah. it's just another government license, I guess. Yeah, that's true. yeah. But so I it's mean, like does, it's like a, it, yeah. Go ahead. Does it does it need policing? I was gonna say, you know what yeah. I mean. Like, are we at that point with fight photographers in Atlanta, Canada, that we need to? Well, that probably be up to the venue, uh, the venue or the promoters themselves. It, it would hundred percent. Yeah. Commission. Well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, we we've always looked after it. Anything I've always done, I've looked after it myself, and that'll yeah. probably continue to be the way. So, uh, keep it that way. That's right, man. Uh, stick with good people. But uh, you anyway. Uh, anybody again? How, how can they get a hold of you, Steve? Uh, before we, I want to get into involved a little bit in your. If anybody isn't aware, uh, Steve's in the military, works in the Navy, um, and uh, has a quite important job. Is one of those people. Uh, who kind of works behind the scenes uh, doing a lot of important things, man. So thanks again for your service. And uh, if you don't mind telling everybody, what's it like, uh, you know, to work in the Navy? 
Um, it's a different world. Um, I initially joined the infantry like one of your previous guests. So switching to the different navy, it's a very different mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the same but different, really. Like the the military is just a representation of the society that they're uh, concerned with. Um, so good way of putting it. Um, so if you look at any issues that are going on with the local populace, that same thing will be happening in the military. Um, the problem, the only problem is once that hits the news, it's now a big, shiny and flashy. So like, Hey, the military is doing this now. Um, hmm. interesting. And of course there, there's the whole second set of laws that we have to deal with. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah which I don't think most people know about. Eh? Um, it's not hard to find. It's just the national defense act really. And all it really means is that I'm held accountable to all civilian laws and then I can be punished much harder. Okay. Uh, You're held to a higher standard overall. Yes. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Jake, yeah. show me a pop or something. <laughs> <laughs> it does make sense. You know, it's, it's one of those things, John, I don't know if about like for me, I never, I don't know how to explain it, but I always looked at people who joined the military and I'm just like, wow. Like it just takes that like, and, and a lot of people do it young. Like I had friends who were in the militia and I'm sure you guys did too. Steve, were you in the militia very young? Uh, no, I was going to be, but my parents wouldn't let me. Okay. Yeah. Well, Hey, you know, everybody has the reasons, but you're, you're in there now. You obviously follow, followed a passion. And I think it's such an admirable thing, man. It really is. Cause like most kids are out, like going to play bat, like, Oh, I want to go do this or I want to do this and hear someone like you or I, I want to go serve. Um, mine was kind of twofold. Like there's obviously I wanted to, but it's also job security at the, at the time was the last recession when the automotive market crashed really badly. Mm -hmm. And my company was a tier one supplier. So my plant got shut down. I had to move to another plant. I lost my seniority. Um, so I was like, I need to do something or I'm going to just going to spin my wheels for the next 20 years. Uh, so I switched into the uniform and I've been kicking ass ever since. Wow. Very, very cool. Interesting. It's amazing, the circle of life. You know, you think about that. Like, I've lost jobs. I, again, I've said it before. I lost my job two weeks before that event. Everybody loses jobs. And it's amazing the, the stress you put on yourself. You know, like, and it, it, man, like you, the world's ending, you almost think. You know, and then it's amazing the circle of life comes back and look at you now. You know, yep. it's funny how it works, right? Well, yeah, the, adjust the adjustments you made then are obviously yeah, paying off. serving you well now, right? So Absolutely. Like, I've been afforded that. a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I'm Follow in the opposite heart, thing, though. right? Like, I thought I was, you know, I've been building businesses and doing my own thing as an entrepreneur for a long time. Like, it's about as long as you've been in the military, about 15 years. And now I'm unemployed. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It's like, here we are. And, it, and, I mean, it's, and it's caused me, uh, you know, a lot of time for thought in this last six or seven weeks. We've been like this about how I can kind of, uh, you know, obviously I want to continue on with the businesses I'm part of now. Like I'm part of them for a reason. But is there other things I can do to kind of guarantee I'm a, I become, you know, an essential service? If this ever happens again, like, I don't know. It, it, it almost seems Talk like to Vince McMahon. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. yeah he's about to actually start doing live taping i think next week they said yeah yeah that's what uh the, everyone that's what everyone he got away it was pretty smart because they taped wrestlemania two weeks before everything got shut down and no one really knew that so then they put it on without fans it was taped before and not all of it but a, a lot of it and man they kind of got thrown under the radar where the ufc took a lot of brunt uh a lot of but i look at it and like i spoke to john about this like to me to push forward and actually put on the events, that's the key. Like everyone's, hey, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. It's the worst thing in the world you can say, I can't. I can. Mm -hmm. We did this, the first one. We can do the second one. Yeah, this is very true. Yeah. We know what we're doing this time. <laughs> well, and it all depends, again, on the doctors and the commission and, and whatever, obviously. Yeah. That, that's the, the first part, and you have to do it the proper way. But I think we have a great team around us, including yourself, Steve, and, and the sky's Thank the limit, you. man. So, you know. It really is. But uh, what, what's the future for you outside of us? Uh, is wrestling? Uh, is it video editing? Uh, what's, uh, so the video allows? editing project that I started was just kind of a, a passion project. My wife needed help with making a video for one of her uh, uh, things. So I was like, hey, 
I used to do this years ago. I'll try it again. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to work on that. Um, as far as the wrestling goes, um, I would like to promote a lot of the local wrestlers and stuff like that. Because if you think these guys are wrestling and putting their lives online yeah. uh, with no health insurance or anything like that for very, <laughs> very little money. For, for pictures. Uh, uh, yeah. Like uh, I, I work for free for the most part for those guys. Yeah. Um, because they can't afford to pay me. Um, so I've been trying to help a lot of those guys out with, uh, recently, um, working with you guys. I'm hoping to build your brand and actually use that as a stepping stone. And what? There ain't no <laughs> stepping stone, man. I mean, I, I'm <laughs> full <laughs> as a step, like grow FLA, not, uh, no, not, no, just not just to you. peace out. Yeah. Um, we know what you meant. Yeah. But, uh, who knows? Like yeah. we, we have to get back to status quo before we can start really predicting the future. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Don't put the cart ahead of the horse. Yeah. No, it's very true, but uh, you're, you're talented, man. And, and we appreciate everything you do with us. You're very keen and eager to help. And uh, that's the kind of people you want to support and surround yourself with the same as our next guest, Alicia, she's the same kind of way. And she owns a, a big business that's very supportive and, and it's kind of important to, that's why these podcasts are important. Network and get to know one another. Story talk. Be supportive, a eh? and just be good to one another. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I love you, man. Yeah. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, Steve Apple, folks, top rope photography. Uh, get at him. Get on him. Get in touch with him. Facebook, Instagram. Where else, Steve? All the Where things. If it's a social media thing, I'm on there somewhere. All right. Get in touch with Steve Apple, folks. Uh, thanks again for joining us, Steve. You're a wonderful guy. A great addition to Fight League Atlantic. We love you lots, and we'll talk to you very soon, my man. Thank you. Okay. Take care, Steve. Right. Awesome. Ciao. Steve Apple, top rope photography. What a guy. What a guy. Love having him on. Uh, fantastic okay. guest. Uh, yeah, he really is. He, he is. He's a great guy. So let's move right into our second guest, John. Um, whew, this girl, what can you say about her? She's pretty talented in a lot of a lot of different ways someone you might get along with well because you have kind of the tattoo thing in common mm -hmm. uh she's super creative when it comes to the tattooing but she started this company truro buzz uh it's a media company out of truro and man they've really taken off they've helped a lot of local companies and it's kind of really taken i think it has a big future i think they can build into a lot of different things and yeah yeah so let's talk to her she's yeah, a absolutely. Su super sweet girl let's bring her on alicia sims hey how are you? I've been doing this for other people, but I've never got to be someone else <laughs> do that before. So, yeah, you you spend all the time interviewing everybody. It's nice to actually tell your story for a change. Well, it was funny to click the link and show up as your guest. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> See how it works from the other side of things. That's true. Yeah, good for you. Good. Well, thanks for joining us. I know you're a super busy girl, and uh, you're involved in a lot of things. So, thanks for taking the time to join us. Well, you know, the schedule is really full these days with all the events that are happening worldwide. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I had to squeeze it in for you. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it. That's right. That's right. So tell us, uh, how's it? Uh, you've, i got to say, for anybody who isn't aware, give Truro Buzz a follow on Instagram, Facebook. Very, very important business before, but not only before, more so now. It, like you connect a lot of people, you do a lot of things, and you've adapted really well. How have you adapted to this so well? Good to know. People think that for sure. Because that <laughs> <laughs> the first week that uh, stuff was closing down there, and I don't remember what the day was, the 14th or something like that. Yeah. Like, okay, so nothing for the newsletter this week. Mm, all of our events and lives have been canceled. So do I just not do anything now? Or <laughs> well, we ended up... Um, I don't want to say the word pivot because I'm so sick of hearing it, but <laughs> I've used that a few times myself. Oh my God. I've been watching a, a virtual summit all day and every single one of them since eight o'clock this morning was like in the pivot of this and the pivot of that <laughs> is Ross Geller going pivot. <laughs> but anyway, yes, I changed it to um, just sharing business posts of letting people know who's still open, what services are they doing? And then the newsletter. Oh, nice. Yeah, rather than be a snapshot of the events that are happening each week, now it's like, here are 29 things you can bake if you're bored. Here's activities with the kids if they have to stay inside. Here's mm -hmm. crafts, uh, take tours of this, and basically whatever I can find to throw into the newsletter to keep anyone at any age busy 
is yeah. what it has turned into. And oddly, it's been busier now. I don't know. I can't say it's been busier now, but it's been busier than I expected it to be for sure. Awesome. Cool. Did you see an increase in traffic after you started, you know, putting your putting your things out during the like, yeah. did, did your subscription go up? Yeah, my email yeah. Awesome. has gone yeah. up. The amount of followers. I haven't gone over to the actual analytics side to see like how many okay. people the website. But uh, yeah, my email subscri uh, subscribers have gone up a good bit, and the followers, yeah, the Facebook followers and Instagram have been leaping up every awesome. day. Awesome, good for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looks, like, to looks like the pivot paid off. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Take that. It, you know, it's one of those things. So you look at it, Alicia. Like <laughs> going back to what we're dealing with right now, how important it is, like yourself, support local. If I look at it, like if I'm going to Google something okay, I can go Google something and find a random website that's going to tell me 20 things and I can listen to this person I don't know. Or I can check Alicia's who lives in my town and support her. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a kind of a circle and I think what you're doing is really catching on and Truro is a hell of a cool town. Like people really support one another. It's, it's like a city. It's like a, I don't know how to explain it, but it's a really cool movement and you're a big part of it. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And yeah, it's definitely... I've gotten so probably more emails and messages thanking me for what I'm doing since COVID started than in the previous two years because now wow. more than ever, people are like, I need something. <laughs> you have a captive audience now, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh my God. Same I, with us, right? Somebody sent me in a little thing for a little while. I was doing stories called Isolation Realizations, and someone said, I, My screen time went up 175% this week. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, wow. right? Like, you're, you become like a mo like, you're motivating people and a lot of people don't have time anymore to sit down and watch TV or, and if they do, it's late at night, but they can sit in their phone and watch you all day and be like, Oh, what's Alicia up to or what's true. No, you're not all day or whatever, but check it really quickly and know what's going on in town or know what deals are on or it's, it's I think it's like a huge thing. doing what I find is great. Like if it's uh, the nook and cranny doing their grocery boxes and delivering or what restaurants are open or the truefood.com that started where I had so many people asking me like what restaurants are open. I'm like, what businesses are doing this? I'm like, I can't call every business in Colchester. Yeah. So someone started that resource up and it's perfect thing to go to. So throwing that stuff out for people is pretty helpful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what's your, awesome. what's your background though? Like where like, like it always tattooing. Uh, I did a degree in graphic design from the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design. And from there, I went into tattooing a few years later. And then, yeah, tattooing. I've been tattooing for 12 and a half years. And then I started uh, doing Truro Buzz. It was three years in November, I think. Three, yeah, I think yeah. it was. Wow. Yeah. Duck. Can you get into Truro Buzz a little bit for those who don't know? Like, uh, what what is the kind of the goal? It's kind of like a new age media company, I guess. Really, right? Like utilizing social and online and yeah, yeah. It's media and promotions of the uh, Colchester area. So it's county wide, even though it's called Truro Buzz. Colchester Buzz just didn't really roll off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's mostly it's mostly on uh, social media. But it it started off because I mean I moved here from Newfoundland. I've been here for at least six years in the summer. And people kept saying on my own social media, like, wow, you really make Truro look fun. I'm like, no, Truro is that fun. I have nothing to do with it. So, <laughs> like, oh, I only report the truth. <laughs> there's no doctoring or filters of these photos. And it started off with just posting a photo like, oh, I'm going to um, Nova Scotia Music Week or I'm eating at this restaurant or this concert is happening. And from there, it just snowballed into, man, we have some really great businesses that are doing awesome things. And they're encouraging more businesses to come and do these things together. And it just snowballed into like video series with the Truro and Colchester Partnership for Economic Prosperity, doing work with you guys on your first yeah. Anything and everything that's come up. I mean, I did a lot of work with Rock the Hub and just general promotion of what it's like to live, work, and play in Colchester County. It spawned into, it started as a social media account, and now we're over 12,000 combined followers with the email subscription and on site, well, <laughs> on site coverage once upon a time. Yeah. yeah. Big numbers on those, though, the lives. You guys would do great on those. Yeah. Um, you know, that'll around. come back. We and, and you know what? Honestly, even if they don't, I can't say I'm sad about being at home on Wednesday night and, like, just had supper. Yeah. Pants on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My I, I haven't been home with evenings free for over a decade, so it's been crazy. 
I yeah. have more than two days off at home since I started working when I was a teenager. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. It's yeah, crazy. I this so is I'm, this is my sample of retirement as well. I'm more yeah. worried. I don't miss work. Like at this point, you know, going into six weeks, I should really miss it. But I'm like, no, it's fine, guys. Like this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. It looks like things are kind of easing up a little bit too. Yeah. Got a fishing license yesterday. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I saw breaking that in tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. My brother-in-law is like, bye. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm glad they opened it up. Like that's insane, oh, really. Like that's. But it's the same as the restrictions for the park. Like to have a 3,000 square foot park that people can't go to is because of the people that just don't. It's like you can have this, just listen to the rules and stay away from people at a distance. Yeah. They didn't it's want to do so that. frustrating. I live on Locks Road in, in Dartmouth. I'm not giving you the number for all you people that want to ag it. But right on the end <laughs> of our road is uh, the Shubenacki Canal. And like the Locks Road is like the Shuby Park or whatever. And just yesterday as soon as dr strang came on he said at three o'clock the parks will open it was like three ten or something the traffic was like a highway but they'd all go down and come back because the park was still closed like it wasn't open yet there's yeah. the, the gates were still closed but mm -hmm. yeah, i, I like, think some of the parks still have like all the trees that have blown down over the winter to clean up and things like that like, oh, they kind yeah. of didn't even get opened and then they just stalled everything for this yeah you're right yeah that was that one on the radio Oh, I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, I saw people like jokingly lined up with the gates the day before. Yeah. So, uh, Joel Taylor. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't going to name drop, but it was Joel. <laughs> Shout out to Joel Taylor. He's a great guy. I love Joel. And what a little runner he is. Yeah. Doing a lot of things. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think it's so, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but obviously Alicia Truro has had a rough last couple of weeks uh the colchester area and i think it's with these restrictions lessening I, I couldn't come at a better time obviously there's been a lot of horrible things that happen and like so i think it couldn't come at a better time yeah i'm just hoping that tomorrow it's supposed to be sunny and 16 degrees so that people go and enjoy but don't ruin it for everybody yeah, yeah. remember your social distancing yeah, well, I got to say, like, we're down in, like, again, we're in darkness, so it's, we're in the epicenter of, the, of it all, but yeah. we, we took a little drive today, and we saw a few people that were certainly not social distancing. Oh, I have turned so. into a crotch of the old person. I had to go to the studio the other day, because I'm doing some stuff there, and there was this gaggle of teenagers going down the street, and it was like, everything in me to summon not to go, you don't live in the city, girl! <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? And it's, I think, I hope it doesn't turn. I hope we can come out of this, eh, and just be like, give everyone, each other a big hug and be like, oh, thank God. Yeah, my, my biggest worry is a relapse now that things relax for a second, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like, we'll get there. Just, just be patient. You've been this patient. We're getting there. It's going in the right in the right direction. So for all yeah. of us, yeah. hang it a little longer. Very true. Very us. true. So what's the future uh, for Churro Buzz with the, obviously the Buzz Boxes. Let, tell some, tell everybody about the Buzz. They've been super popular. That's a great idea. Yeah, it uh, tripled my expected numbers. Um, wow. So I, I had this idea a year ago and I haven't had time to develop it because we were so busy with all the events and everything else that we were offering. So it just kind of sat on the back burner. And within the first few weeks of home, it was like, okay, now is the right time to do this. Um, so it's the idea of like a subscription box, but we're not moving to a subscription service and it's a small box of uh, local product and it retails for $69.99. It was perfect for Mother's Day. It was mm -hmm. a way to support local. You didn't have to go into any stores to buy it. You could just buy it online. Uh, free local delivery thanks to the Downtown Truro Partnership. And wow. um, you had shipping options as well. I like sent them to BC, across Ontario and Quebec. And yeah, they were, um, it was a bad time to not have staff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a lot of work. Oh, I saw you hustling. Yesterday, I built so many cardboard boxes. Like my hands are charred, and then of course you go out, and you're like sanitizing and screaming because your hands are full of guts. But it was an incredibly successful project, and I'm so grateful to everybody. And now people have started getting them from the initial shipment I did a couple cool. weeks ago, and yeah, the positive uh, vibes coming back are pretty good. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's a way I pivot. Yeah, yeah, that's right, right? Like the words right out of my mouth. Like I know, right? you think you have no time, and then it's amazing what like John's the same way. Like he owns two business, three or 
probably 12, the, I don't know how many, owns, but like you extremely busy, right? And like you, there's only so much time in the day. And it's yeah. amazing to see people, and we're doing it with us, fight the, to pivot, I guess, and change yeah. courses, but stay the course at the same time, right? Yeah, totally. Detour. I mean, this show, we wouldn't have ever had the time to fire up. No. You know, so there's been a lot of things come out of this. I mean, even just fixing things around the house and, mm-hmm. you know, there's still a lot to do with the businesses, like with taxes and book work and all that crap. So let's be done and maintenance. Yeah. And Are your businesses still open, John? No, I'm in the gym business, so in the fight business, right? And then my fallback's tattooing. Um, so, yeah, I'm Is totally it? out of work. Well, I did it for about 12 or 13 years, I guess, as well. No way! When, yeah, I did it forever. And then it's been one of those things that I've, I've ramped it up at certain times over those you know those years. But most of it's just been like a back burner side project. Like, I'll do a project, you know. Mm-hmm. maybe three or four projects a month and maybe at the most i was doing like eight or ten and then when they brought in all the regulations in the spring i was going through the process because i do have a proper setup and i do have you know you know i had like pro accounts with icon and all that stuff so i'm i'm good to go legitimately set up but i was like man with the time i have i'm doing about one project every two months now and this and that, and that. so i never even bothered and then, but it's one of those things I could go through and fire back up if I ever chose to. So it's been like, you know, my wife got a new tattoo during this shutdown. I got a new tattoo during this shutdown. Like, <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting a new tat- FLA. There you go. Tattoo. I'm thinking like 14 inches across your back. Yeah. Big not- chunk black letters. Just- <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what we'll do. See my sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've been yeah. doing it for a long time, but it's just one of those things I kind of had to push the back burner and prioritize the other things. I, I do find that, like, I'm starting to have problems with my wrists and stuff as well. So oh, yeah. there's different different factors that have played into it, but I've still got all my gear. I mean, if I spin that phone around, it's just cabinets and inks and machines and all that. So I, just, yeah. It's yeah. such an incredible talent. Like, I see some uh, of your, like, I've it, seen right? yours on your wife, beautiful. And I see lots of your work, Alicia. Like, it's a hard, like I, it's an incredible talent. It really is. Thank you, thank you. We work hard at it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, it's a long process. It's not something like you know. You see the whole stencil work, the process, and that's people probably don't see the work put in behind the scenes, but to get it ready, right? Mm-hmm. There, yeah, there is yeah. quite a process. Are you eager but, to get back traveling, Derek? Nah, traveling's fucked. I'm true. I never thought about it until coming on. It was like your industry might be the worst one. Oh in- yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I population travel. Totally, totally. Like my industry, that's this, and then my fight. This is, but whatever. Who can, at the end of the day, you can, it can always be worse. I don't care. Like you know, you can take my money, you can't take my pride, and that's just the way it is. I don't give a shit. So you're gonna move forward. You're gonna push forward. Um, but yeah, it's it's a. Uh, I don't know, like traveling, will it come back? I'm not sure, but it'll probably oh, be a few years, right? Yeah. So, but, you know, I'll probably end up working through Pure later or something behind the scenes or whatever. And I, that's fine. I'm cool with that. Whatever I have to do to keep the, the fight business running and working with John. But, well, if yeah. you guys are going on the memento, you're going with the first uh, FLA event you had lined very closely by the second one, had it been able to go, I don't think you're going to have a problem. <laughs> Well, who knows, right? It's it's working with people like you and just enjoying life. Like, you know, it's trying to stay positive through all this kind of foolishness and just, you know, it can always be worse. Always. Yeah, I'm one of the lucky ones that I haven't been, I mean, yes, I've been hit hard, but like I had enough to sustain me. So I'm not in, I mean, the first week or two was like an emotional roller coaster. But after I came through that, this has just been such a gift, like to have this downtime. I've never had a month off with my partner because he works away for most of the year as well. So what, yeah. like, it's just been amazing to be able to work on the buzz box or Turo buzz stuff, or just, you know, not work for 14 hours a day. Was, yeah. It's been, yeah. It's been a treat. Yeah. Well, your job too. Like you're kind of like us, like you're always on your phone all the time yeah. or you're, or you're tattooing. And I don't know about ta- ta- tattooing, but I would assume it's like stress. You're, you're tight. You're, you're, yeah concentrating you know it's, it's probably hard to do it's very hard on the body for sure like there's a finite amount of time that i can tattoo in my life for sure which is what's great about true buzz's popularity taking off is that well and i have something a little bit better to fall back on yeah 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 i find yeah, yeah. i couldn't well, tattoo eight hours a day it would literally kill me 
I do it. Um, I've cut back a little bit with Turo Buzz getting so busy, which has been great, but it's still like, it's still a solid, probably 40 hours a week. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Good for you. Well, you do damn good work, my friend. Yeah. Thanks, bud. So where can everyone find you? Uh, anywhere on social media. You can <laughs> uh, Alicia E. Tattoo for my regular shenanigans or my Turo Buzz shenanigans are at Turo Buzz. And there's TuroBuzz.com or RollingC.ca is my tattoo website. And on Instagram at colchesterbuzz.com. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. But there you have it, folks. You're looking for news. You're looking for information. Truobuzz.com. Uh, you know, support local. Support these people that are hustling and putting their time into it. You know, there's lots of copy and paste websites out there that get your name wrong in the articles. So make sure you support the local ones to get it right. Lots of love to you, Truro Buzz. Lots of love to you, Alicia Sims, and everything you do for Fight League Atlantic and Colchester County, my friend. We'll awesome. Can't wait to work together again, guys. Hopefully so. Thanks, Alicia. No problem. All right. Alicia Sims, Turo Buzz. Great girl. Yeah. Yeah, sweetheart. Does a lot of great work in the community. And I, I kind of forgot to mention it there, but, like, man, supporting local is such a huge thing. And she pushes that uh, a lot, you know. And oh, it's a, she's all in on the supporting local. That's for yeah. sure. And yeah. it's, it, man, it's, it's, it's true. It's so important. But uh, let's swing into our third guest here, man. This is a guy I've known for a long time here. He works in the rental, uh, the car kind of industry in uh, in Nova Scotia here. He's been involved in it for a long, long time. And uh, just a super comical guy, a very, very smart business guy. And uh, yeah, just an all around kind of uh, wise guy with a lot of wise knowledge. And uh, yeah, he's been a good friend for a long time. So let's bring him in. Aaron in the cloud. How you doing? Andrew McLeod. That that might be the nicest intro I've ever heard. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> You're like a good that. guy. And not not to pump your guys' tires, but uh, I was at your first event in Truro. Uh, a few buddies of mine came down. We had great seats, thank to you. It was phenomenal. So congrats to both of you. It's an awesome organization. and Nothing but good times ahead for you, I'm sure. Thank you, Andrew. Fingers crossed, man. Thank you very much. I came in. I came by. You've been a fan of our events for a long time. Andrew was actually front row at the very first Sub Series Pro event in the the Glasgow Square as well. So awesome. he's been a absolutely fan, supporter and a fan for the long time. I believe you took Kyle Sanford's girlfriend seats or something like that. Uh, it sounded familiar. Yeah, something of that effect. <laughs> right. Took me a while to find your alcohol sponsor tonight, but I guess it's NS Spirit Company. So I'll, I'll make sure I'm drinking the right stuff for you. There you go. How is it? It's good, yeah. As you say, buy local. I mean, they make some great stuff there, and that's right in Picto, so Picto County, I should say. So, yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. You're always a good supporter of us, buddy. So, how how's life uh, dealing with obviously with everything that we're dealing with here? You're you're in the HRM as well. How are you hanging in there? Yeah, no, not bad. It's uh, as you say, it's it's different. Uh, the auto industry in general is just especially if you're anything related to rental or, or commercial airline business where it's just tough. I don't know if you guys have been around the airport, but it's, it's empty. There, there's nothing going on right now. And it's, uh, you know, you're in the travel industry, Derek, as well, so you know it. But it's, it's going to be a couple of years. You know, it's going to take a while for this to all bounce back. So it's, it's scary for a lot of people. But, you know, we're getting through it. I, I think we're going to do fine. We'll come out on the other side. But, yeah, it's a very strange time. Yeah, it is, John. It's uh, it's one of those things that it's, it's kind of like the trickle down, eh? Like everyone doesn't really think about it until they're like, oh, wait a minute. If no one's traveling. No one's renting cars. No one's buying cars. You know, like there's no one's buying insurance. Like there's there's a whole. No trip. one's no one's staying in hotels. No one's well, obviously restaurants aren't even open. But and then you know, as we talked about earlier today, how long does this take? You know, how long before conventions happen? How long before conferences happen? How are businesses going to look at their, you know, their uh, meetings differently now? Are they going to, you know, travel to Toronto and do a meeting? You know, probably not. Uh, and the big convention cities in the U.S., your Orlando's and Nashville's and New Orleans and Orange County, California, you know, are there going to be conventions for the next two years? You know, possibly not. So it's scary. Yeah, it really is. John, John, John sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to just ask Andrew. Um, what can you can you lay out in a snapshot like what your business is and what you guys do there and then what you're able to do now or, or what's even working or happening? Yep. Don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in the in the car rental industry, obviously you got kind of two major segments, which is your airport yeah. 
and the sort of your in town. You do a lot of replacement business, insurance, et cetera. If you guys were ever in an accident, I'm sure you wound up in a rental car at some point. So yeah. The airport airport business has really just ceased. Uh, so it's quite, quite slow. I mean, you can see the flights into Halifax every day now. Very limited. Uh, international travel, all, you know, obviously all but gone. Cruises are stopped. So the airport has slipped a lot. And, and then on the in-town stuff, uh, we're seeing a different way to do business, but we're still doing a lot of business, you know. It's a lot more disinfecting. It's a lot more deliver and collect. Uh, people aren't coming in, but you know we're we're working around that, and it's going to look different. You know, when we come back from all this, businesses are going to look different. I think the picking up your groceries even is probably going to continue. You know, you're going to see more and more people do that once things get back to normal. So, mm. I, you can see it in advertising. You guys are watching TV like the rest of us in 24 hours a day, and. You can see people are pushing the contactless delivery, and that, that's going to keep happening after this, I think. I think you're right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's another thing. You look at that because there's a lot of businesses that are really suffering, and then you look at that, you talk about contactless delivery, cashless apps, things like that. Like I was talking yeah. to Peter Anthony about like how those stocks are skyrocketing, right? Because people don't want to, to touch cash anymore. They want everything touchless, convenient. Yeah clean yeah i'm going back absolutely to gold. what's that i'm yeah. going back to bars of gold <laughs> i hope you guys got lots of bitcoin saved up john got, does got a little bit does he yeah nice good call I'm not, john i'm not a believer i'm a believer no i hold, I hold no, a I bunch of different coins too volatile we'll see well i it's think everything's volatile, volatile now stock market yeah Mark, no <laughs> man, you always need the market. banks you always need the banks yeah, it's true. It's true. Now, what about for you guys, Derek? I mean, how are things going to look? You obviously can't have fans for the time being. Yeah, yeah I think that's yeah. the plan, eh, John? Like, uh, yeah, John and I obviously own it together, and that's the plan. It's just to kind of move forward without fans. Uh, if as we long can. As the, we're we're yeah, in kind of a can. limbo right now. We're, we're just starting to look into options now that they're starting mm-hmm. to starting to relax these guidelines and Mm -hmm. and starting to figure out i think what what covid's doing and how it moves so that we can put contingencies in place that would make sure it's safe so i don't know i mean we've got some phone calls to make we've discussed it a ton where you know there's a lot of logistics there's a lot of questions that need to be answered and that's where we're at now we're answering questions Mm -hmm. and seeing how far that rabbit hole how far down we can go yeah so much depend like is that like you look at the ufc and they're putting on their event they're yep. going forward with it but people don't realize the lengths they're going to to put it on like, yeah we don't know, have we, a billion dollars to deck out a yeah. resort with hotels and but we do have 715 pesos <laughs> that's, that's not bad i think you still got the terra motel in new glasgow too there you so go, you got accommodations terror. locked up well, we're that we're in Picto though, so we'll have to use the anchor. Oh, we'll sorry, to, yeah. But you that, can go the to thing the is, you look at the Lions did. You shout out to Lions Den, who, who yeah. never, never gave us a discount. But yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the rustic anchor though, uh, Tony Dolan. They always hooked us up. Good. But yeah, going back to that. Um, fuck, I don't know what was talking. What were we talking about? Man, it's your we're podcast. Talking no, we're, not- we're talking about the logistics of putting on shows without, uh, without no, people. No, one of us know. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it could be like the UFC has every fighter. They're saying possibly every two fighters will have one doctor. Like, really? that. Oh, wow. Like, you know what I mean? And, like, they'll have to be every room. Every fighter gets their own room. Every, But they're obviously going to fly in. All right, fighters will be able to drive up that day, drive home that night. So it would be a little bit different. and so until like you guys Ford. until you guys get some border uh, restrictions lifted, you're you're being a tough spot, I would think, to to hold something right now, eh? Yeah, I think we, something. like John thinks that. I think we'd be I, fine with Nova Scotian fighters, but you never I, know. I yeah, true. Being able to make the amount of fights just out of Nova Scotia, but that's another question. Like we we literally yeah. discussed three hours Did ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you yeah. know that, Andrew? <laughs> I can sense it. I'm just, yeah. you know, you called me a smart businessman, yeah. so I felt that. Took over Did you the check interview? the pre-show notes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's true though. Like it's and it's just like you said. Like your industry, everything's kind of in limbo. Not like it's not like we can do anything until the government well, sits so, and you can't either. 
Yeah. I think anybody who's trying to be an expert on this is ridiculous. Yeah. Nobody has any clue what's going to happen. Uh, nobody knows how companies are going to react because the dust hasn't settled. Yeah. So to sit there and say that, you know, the cruise industry is going to be in Halifax in August is, you know, it's ridiculous. It's just, yeah. it's highly unlikely much of anything's going to happen in 2020, but that's just us three talking. You know, I don't think there's <laughs> any proof to that, but I can't imagine live events are going on this calendar year. Uh, the hell and I don't even know what they'll, yeah, yeah. you got to well, think I, it's I think off the, for this the, year. Anyway. The, the general kind of consensus or talk is about a, um, a vaccine being available when they allow live events again. And, and I mean, right. I, I worked in clinical research for about five years and, and, and that stuff's going to take who knows how long. Right. And you see, you see news yeah. every now and then, like. Spot in Truro or Dartmouth's got a vaccine coming out, and Spot in, in <laughs> Africa has a vaccine coming out, and somewhere in South America, and it's like, it's coming so fat, but you know, you don't know what's true, and you can't really believe yeah. any of it, so are we going to be 18 months from now getting a vaccine, which is a number we keep hearing, or is it going to be six months, or what, it, you know, yeah. it's, that would be ideal if someone could come up with something that would actually yeah. fix it, Good. or, you know, be able to... Yeah, and I, th I think in general, people's travel habits are going to be a little funny for a while anyway. Mm. But, you know, I don't yeah. think you're going to be as inclined to run to Disney World this fall as you might have been. I, I think you're a lot of that buy local, travel local, and I, ho I hope people do do that when they're out uh, spending their, their dollars this summer that they, they try to still do some things but spend it locally. Yeah, That's it. Good, I think back to like I worked on cruise ships for seven and a half years of my life. And As Prince Charming, no, no less. <laughs> yeah. be telling people that. Oh, stuff. sorry, I forgot that was a secret. That's right. That was a secret. This is before the fight community knew me, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's funny, like the how things have. I was on there just after nine eleven, and and before nine eleven, like for anybody who doesn't know a cruise ship, underneath the cruise ship, there's all doors that it's they call it an I ninety five, like or or Main Street kind of thing, like a highway that goes all the way from the front to the back of the ship. So you can see right to the, and then the, the rooms like go down and they filter off that. Right. And at, at, before nine 11, that was open straight from one end of the, the ship to the other. So all the people who worked there legit, you could see from one end to the other, and it was filled with smoke and people passed out naked and drunk everywhere. It was insane, man. How crazy cruise ship life was working there. Like it was nuts. Yeah. And then to, you can like you can cut kind of, like people you could buy a quarter like because it's all duty free so you could buy it was all cashless society i would get a card when i get on the ship i would go on there swipe my card that would be my key to get on and off the ship that'd be the key to get in my room that'd be my key to go buy a quart of vodka for twelve dollars like everything was so cheap and crazy and to see it now like how it's been affected you can kind of see the writing was on the wall because it's just a like 7,000 filthy people on there. Like, yeah. I don't know how I got on that tangent, but. Well, someday wow. you'll have to tell us a story about an Australian magician, but maybe we'll save that for an <laughs> offline one. <laughs> yeah. That's but that's probably story. not for a PG 13 audience. Definitely not. Definitely not. That is a story for a book uh, someday. Possibly. But you're, you're right. I mean, I've been on cruises. They're, Incredibly close quarters. Uh, your rooms are right beside each other. You're eating. You even think the last concert you were at. Yeah. You know, it's it's crazy oh, to think that even our next generation. There. Yeah. I mean, you go to Sobeys now, and if you're within six feet, somebody's hissing at you. Uh, anybody coughs, and the whole place turns around. So it's, it's just the, a different what? world to live in, right? But what? It, that's where we get into conspiracy theories here for a little bit. Now, nah, now we're talking. Do you like? Because you, you look yeah. at this. Kind Let of me have another drink like, first. <laughs> I was <gonna> <laughs> <say>. <laughs> you look at this, yeah. and it's like, like the push is on for like technology, like the gradual, slow climb to get here, and now everything is kind of pushing this way to technology. Like, I don't know. It just kind of seems fishy. Like, there's a lot of weird things that are happening that seem kind of fishy. Like even that alien thing. Like, why would they release that now in the U.S. government? Why would they say? Oh, we've, we, yeah, there's been proof we've had aliens. When people have been looking for like a million years. One I, year, I think aliens. it's the old look over here uh, scenario for the U.S. government right now. Yeah, maybe that's true to get, get them away from. Now, do you, do you think the virus, 
Do you think the virus is legit, or do you think that was orchestrated? That's what I'm getting at, John. What do you think? I think it's a real thing. I mean, there's been a ton of people get sick. I have friends that have tons of friends that have been sick, so unless they're getting sick. No, but I mean the origin of it. Yeah, the origin. Um, Not that it's, obviously it's real. It's terrible. I don't know. I I want to believe it came from bat soup or whatever. I, I'm, I'm not going to speculate. I really, I really don't know, right? So I'm not one of those ones that's going to jump to like any kind of conclusion without knowing exactly what the facts are or you know what I need to know. But I do feel like it's an awfully convenient way to gain some ground without firing a shot for particular parties and countries. And I think there's a lot of people that are really doing well off of this. And a lot of that is because a lot of people are not doing well because of this. So... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've I've heard some crazy shit too. That was a, I'm pretty, that's a pretty real. roundabout answer. You like that? Pretty that's pretty safe. <laughs> that, pretty safe. <laughs> that was a good one. Was. <laughs> yeah. No, that and that's certainly the one that's gone around. Was this orchestrated and planted awesome. and and everything else? But you got to wonder. I mean, so little information comes out of uh, you know China of. Uh, yeah perfectly you know uh too much comes out of the actual way so it's it's tough to figure out what's going on but you know uh, you can see the world health organization you know two months ago told everyone close your borders stop Mm -hmm. yeah and it was about a month and a half later that we did um but you know we're an open border society people travel you know the scary thing is what if this comes back you know we're what what's that going to look like in the fall so well, it's easier said than done. Like, I had to close down all my businesses entirely, you know, and yeah. I didn't want to do that until I absolutely had to because I was also sure. a thought like, all right, I shut down today. Everybody else shuts down in six weeks. It goes for another two months. I just fucked myself yeah. for an extra six weeks than everyone else. So you're, like, kind of yeah. in that, you know, in that boat. Like, yeah. once it became a thing, okay, yeah, we're done. And, and, you know, and thankfully, I think we kind of got ahead of it, especially around here. Like, we've had a fairly limited amount of cases. But to just be like, yeah, you know what, let's shut down the border. And then in two days, be like, yeah, you know what, reopen it. Like, you you can't flip-flop on those kind of things, I don't think, right away. No. One one of the things I, I, you know, I I, I tell people that are, you know, like, guys that are working for me and stuff like that, I tell myself, like, in business, I've learned over the years, you kind of got to be able to make fast decisions and small moves. So you need to be able to, like, come to the conclusion that this is what needs to happen quickly and it shouldn't take you forever. But at the same time, you can't rush into moves and flip-flop back and forth because there's nothing worse than a business decision. Like, it's happened to me. I've learned from being yeah. in business and doing this. You Your make a decision. Me, but... Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but maybe, First you mistake. Know, maybe you jump into business with somebody or maybe you promote somebody from within or, or this and that and, you, and you're a little bit too hasty on that decision and you got to pull that back. That's a lot worse, I think, than waiting a couple of days getting all the facts in front of you and then making the correct move. So make fast decisions and slow moves. And I feel like that's probably the same boat they were in. That's a, another, how do you like that, man? Just, uh, I like that. Oh. Full circle. Full circle. Circle of life, Simba. Like a no comedian, standing. right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's true, though, man. Like, it's it's interesting because, like, we spoke about that, John, before. Like, you know, your shit, we, like, the gyms. Like, how many local gyms been shut down, Andrew? Like, fuck, like, I can't go to the gym. Like, it's Why, it's why would I know that, but, Derek? But, well, we spoke, but, but like the local. I think I drove by a new bodies in the late nineties. Are they still yeah. out there? Maybe not. <laughs> new yeah. bodies. I forgot about the new bodies. Oh yeah. Who are they yeah. now? They've That's obviously... good life, isn't it? Is it? That I don't know. I think so. Like new bodies, and I think curves yeah. shut down. Maybe like yeah. Yeah. Good that, whatever there. happened to that? So, somebody figured out you could buy a stepper at Walmart for six bucks and just put it in their house, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was, wasn't it? It was like yeah. steppers and like it was just like a spin class. <laughs> Wait a right? minute. <laughs> put this in my garage. Oh my I'm all God. set. Yeah. I got a two by that's six so at home true. I can step up on. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. So yeah. But yeah, it's a, does a and then how do you guys find it? I mean, you're obviously in the fight game and uh, big gym rats. So, I mean, what do you do to keep in shape at this point? I've got Six. a 12,000 square foot fitness gym I've been having to myself. So that's been helpful. Oh, you got it to yourself. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'm shut down. So I'm in there doing things for work. You know, we are still doing some online orders for supplements and renting equipment. And so I've been getting in and getting my workouts in. And it's kind of been good for me to, tra- you know, there's, there's machines in my gym I've never used. So I've been playing around but 
But yeah, the, the martial arts has been a big adjustment because that's where I was four or five days a week yeah, or right. more for over a decade. That's my like social circle. Yep. That's everyone I'm around. You know, I'm lifting weights now. Like I've done it in the past on and off, but I'm not a big guy. That's not my thing. I want to mm-hmm. be rolling. I want to be, do, you know, I boxing spar every week and I do my boxing and my yeah. jiu-jitsu and hit the bag and do a bit of weights at a buy. Like that's kind of where I'm at, but it's it's been an adjustment and, I, I I mean I shouldn't go on and on and on like I've I've got space here so I'm outside all the time I've been working on mm-hmm. you know That's building true, a chicken coop and being being physical and being active and, and getting my workouts in all the same so yeah but that comes well, and goes like sorry, I'm putting muscle ahead. on right now it's been good <laughs> no I was gonna say well hopefully you guys can get open soon uh, to me yeah. it's kind of odd that uh, gyms aren't early on as we sort of phase back in as you know you can separate you can allow so many people uh, obviously well, your, say, your sanitation have, is very yeah. high there yeah yeah absolutely like the the martial arts is tough it's really hard to fight somebody from a distance but you know I mean there's certain certain ones on the internet or whatever but the, uh, the, fitness gym. <laughs> the fitness gym, you know, there's logistics within like going in there to dress rooms maybe, but we have the space right. that people could be spread out. And in the last week or two of this kind of coming to, to, to a closure, that's what we were doing. Our, our member, our membership, like we have, you know, we have quite a few members, but our daily numbers right. dro- dropped dramatically and that allowed everyone to be spaced out properly and we spaced had extra out, hand yeah. sanitizers up and we were spending extra time wiping things down and just policing the floor a little bit more and things like that. But We'll see. I, 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 my big worry is we're going to take a long time to bounce back as well because for the size of the facility we have, you know, it's not enough to have 500 members. We need to have seven, eight, nine hundred members to be a sustainable business. Right. So if we reopen, I do feel like there's going to be a lot, like a lot of people. People tell me every day, like, man, I can't wait for the gym to reopen. Can't wait for the gym to reopen. And that's yeah, martial yeah. arts. That's that's you know, it's people's lives. Yeah. It's mental health. It's it's being physically fit. Yep. Like, um, and the social aspect as well for a lot of people. Uh, of the gym but i worry that maybe we reopen with half of our members and that trickle back to where we're sustainable takes a long time or maybe i'm completely right. wrong i hope i am right like we have to get back fast but how how long is it going to take from getting reopened to scaling back up like you're talking about a couple years for rental cars and flights and stuff picking back right. up we might be in the same boat so who knows, yeah. man? I mean, fingers crossed That's everything goes back to normal, but it's going to be, I think we're going to feel it can be, I guess, for a long time. One of two ways. It can be like New yeah. Year's, after New Year's, when the gyms are packed, everybody's there. Or it can be like New Year's and everyone's is that a head. Is that a true thing, John? If somebody well, yeah. doesn't hit a gym, yeah. I have no oh, idea. Oh, yeah. We, we see our peaks in like October, once everyone kind of gets back into their fall routine, and then we see them again in, you know, January, February, um, and right. then tapers off for the summer, like June, July, August. And that's, I mean, I have a gotcha. climbing gym, a martial arts gym, a fitness gym. It's the same in all of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Show well, well as, long as, as long as Barber's open soon, Derek looks like you did your own hair. I so I'm still looking hair. all right there. I did my Yours own hair isn't well. too bad. My brother's my barber, so hopefully I can get back to get a sensible haircut soon. I just went in and shaved it. <laughs> it yeah. shows. I yeah, I can see a few misses. No, man, look at that. Look at that, 40 That's years old bad. coming up, yeah. 40 years old. I'm looking like a little gray coming in here and there, but you that's got because some good of the hair black density. density. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's, that's for work. I have great hair density. Shout out to my dad, Brian Clark, 72 years old, full head of black hair, well, guy. There you no go. Joke. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's I true. Think the hair gene comes I just want, your, yeah, go ahead. I just want fantastic Sam's to get back open in Zellers. <laughs> Zellers, <laughs> yeah, yeah wait for Sears and Zellers to bounce back. Wilco, this. Yeah. yeah, Zellers and Wilco. Those were the days. Those were the days when things were good, folks. Things were easy. Right. Things were fun. You know, it's uh, it's it's certainly changed. It's it's no question about it. And it's uh, an interesting talk and, and to see where the future is going to hold, my man. But uh, Andrew, I got to thank you for joining us, dude. You're you're a hell of a guy, a hell of a poker player. Anytime. A, a good guy to go watch hockey games with, play golf with, uh, and a great guy to know in the car industry. So, uh, yeah, man, thanks for joining us, and thanks for supporting our events. Anytime. Thank you both. Good luck. Awesome, good my man. Be man. safe out there. Hey, we'll see you soon. Andrew McLeod, you my friend. It.
Take care, Andrew. Yes, great guy. Great guy, John. Yeah, seems like a really great guy. I hope I yeah, didn't really uh, talk over his interview too much there. Was... He's pissed. He already texted me. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm right away. I apologize, Andrew. It was, yeah. it was good to talk to somebody uh, working in you know an affected industry and see what they're doing. And he obviously yeah. sounds like a wise guy. Like He's been at it for a while. Yeah. Long, long time. I, I owe him uh, a lot, actually. He's got me. He got me a job in the rental industry after I moved back from Toronto. So I've been through this thing with travel before. Uh, I've been through it with SARS before when I, I lived in Toronto as I was a tour manager and travel and blah, blah, blah. People that don't know me, a lot of people know me through the fight community, but they don't know my past. Like we were talking about Cat yesterday, where the name come, all that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. It happened to me in SARS before, and I had to move home, and travel was out, and, and Andrew helped me out, get me a job in the car industry, and I did that for a little while, in the Michelin for a little while, and before I almost fucking blew my head off, and then I had to get out there, because oh, just Michelin was not for me, man, at yeah. all. Oh, dude, good for anybody that can do that. Uh, anybody Jeff can get in there. Tough, eh? yeah. Dude, it was yeah. nothing against Michelin. It's not that they did anything wrong. It's just yeah. I wasn't built for that. Like it's so people are like, oh, it's easy, you know. That. But yeah. that is not people that can get in there and work shift work is hard work, man. Man, I've had different jobs that made me miserable, and it was smarter yeah. to move on and, and take a pay yeah. cut. It's just not. It's not worth it, you know. That's it. That's I've, it. Right? I've sat there and just kind of looked at my hands and not being able to force myself to work and mm -hmm. no place to be, no way to live. And that's it. And it, again, it brings you back full circle. Look at us now. Not that yeah. we're, but you know what I mean? Life does go on, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that we're anything special, but life goes on and you're, you're going to be fine. And it, it is interesting that you've gone through this with SARS as well before, because I've never gone through anything like this. When SARS happened, I was in Nova Scotia, so it, it yeah. didn't really affect us at all. You yeah. know, and I had conversations with friends earlier on in this, uh, this shutdown. You know, because people kept asking me, like, when are you going to be reopened? What's happening? Blah, blah, blah. And, like, we've talked about before. Like, we got no information. We were literally on the news told to shut mm -hmm. down. We didn't get an email or a letter or anything like yeah. that. And we mm -hmm. have no idea, no. you know. So for me to have a contingency plan in place for my business for a pandemic that shuts down the whole country, well, that's not exactly something I'm going to spend a week of my time on when I'm running full tilt. 14 yeah. hours a day like I normally have. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly, like, oh, yeah. I'm going to stop this week. I mean, <laughs> You know, and, I got to plan you know, my pandemic, pandemic. Plan, just in case, you know what I mean? Because you never would have dreamed it would have happened. Now that no. it's happened, obviously, we could move forward with that knowledge behind us. But yeah, it's you have to listen to those pandemic planners, man, more often. Those people with the bunkers and stuff. Yeah, they're people with too much time, bro. Yeah, Good for, I'm jealous, though, man. Yeah, for I mean, real. Some of those people got some pretty badass spots hey man, underground. I, I, you know what? I'm finding yeah, them I, too. I say that, but. Yeah, it doesn't bother me either. I could be underground, but it's, uh, you know, what's the, what's the old saying? Like, uh, be prepared, but hope you don't need it or whatever. Yeah, it's like yeah. money, right? Like, it's you talk about, it's like my dad always says, you know, like, you want to put some money away for a rainy day, right? Like, growing up, that's what he always would say, and, and it's so smart. You know, I'd be like, oh, stupid, I'm going to be dead when I'm 50 or whatever, right? I don't need that, you know, but you might. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, do you yeah. want to work at Walmart when you're fucking 81 years old because you have no money? Like, well, that's it. Yeah. With improper planning, like, do you want to be sitting there at 75, 10 years into retirement, going, "Shit, I got to go back to work." Yeah. You know, it's, that's a for real thing. Like, I'm 39 yeah. years old. Again, I've been through this. Like, I've been lucky. I've had good people support me around, and, and but I've hustled too, right? To to have a little money in the bank, and nothing comes without blood, sweat, and tears. So anybody sitting at home and and thinking that anything comes without her, like John, our event, like we don't talk about it a lot, but man, like, dude, how many, I probably had six mini strokes. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's a super stressful thing. I mean, we had to put a lot on the line and, and, but that's it. If you have an idea and you want to actually do anything in this oh, life, be. then you gotta, you gotta put the work in. You gotta be willing to take those calculated risks and that's the other key. Fast decisions, small, uh, short, uh, slow moves, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's where you're an absolute genius. That's where we make a fantastic team because I'm pretty sporadic. And that anybody who knows me, that's kind of my ADHD, whatever. But that's a lot of great ideas come from that. But you balance me out, and you're an absolute genius in so many things when it comes to business, man. And you lead the way in that and make us a strong team, dude. So you keep you keep leading us, bringing us to the top, my man. <laughs> Thank you, brother. That's what it's about, folks. So good teamwork, good love, and uh, pass positivity around, folks. So Absolutely. we had a great episode tonight, and uh, 
yeah, so we got a great episode lined up for tomorrow night, folks. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to bring them on at the same time, 6.30. That's the plan. So who do we got on tomorrow night, John? We got Simon Borat. Simon Borat is another guy who uh, he's actually a youth soccer coach out of Massachusetts, uh, originally from England, played some great soccer over there in England, and uh, now he's a youth soccer coach down in England. So we'll get to chat with him about how he's been affected in this whole thing. And then Zach Malsaney. Uh, Zach Malsaney is the owner of the Finishers podcast, the Finishers 10th Planet down there in New Jersey. Uh, have you ever seen the sub-only show they do down there? No. No, he's a black belt under uh, Eddie Bravo, uh, 10th Planet Bethlehem. Okay. They got a great show down there. It's called the Finishers Sub-Only. Uh, they, they did a lot of shows like Sub-Series Pro back in the day. Big, big jiu-jitsu, uh, very, very talented, done a lot of MMA as well. So we got him on and then uh, – yeah, we'll move on from there, and uh, we got a big week ahead of us with some NHL superstars and uh, NHL boxers, fighters. We got a rapper, Quake Matthews, coming on as well next week. Nice. Super excited to chat with Matt. Uh, Matt, fuck Quake. It's been a long day, folks. If you can be anything in this world, John, be kind, people. All right, folks. Thanks for joining us, John. I love you.